By looking at black-footed ferrets, you would struggle the tiny creatures have been through to come back from the brink of extinction. Nor would you know of the dedication of so many individuals who have worked for years to reintroduce one of North America's most endangered mammals to its native home in the wild. See the burrow? There you go. To see an animal start to come back in the wild and to know that you're a part of that is just an incredible thing. To understand just how far black-footed ferrets have come, you must first know where they come from. You see, black-footed ferrets are completely dependent upon prairie dogs for survival. In fact, more than 90% of the ferret's diet consists of prairie dogs. And ferrets hunt, sleep, and raise their young in prairie dog burrows. So, back at the turn of the century, as the North American plains were being settled, large tracts of prairie dog towns were plowed under to make way for crops. At the same time, American pioneers thought prairie dogs were competing with their livestock for grass on their ranges. So a widespread poisoning campaign began to eliminate prairie dogs. This archival slide shows the results of a single day's work poisoning prairie dogs in one Arizona colony. The death of the prairie dogs meant the demise of the native black-footed ferret, which was listed as an endangered species in 1967, and by the mid-1970s, wildlife biologists thought the species was extinct in the wild. They were historically in this area, and because of people's naivety, they have been decimated. And so it's a good thing that they are being reintroduced, and I believe that's meant to be. The Phoenix Zoo sure thinks it's meant to be. It's one of several zoos across the country participating in a captive breeding program to help bring back the black-footed ferret. Here, in quarters designed to mimic their natural habitat and under stringent sanitary precautions to avoid disease, black-footed ferrets are meticulously raised and bred. They're great little guys. They're, they're, they're not tame at all. They're not like your domestic ferret. You can't really make friends with them. But they're a lot of fun to watch. They're wonderful little predators. And the fact that we're actually breeding them to go back into the wild, and particularly back into the wild in Arizona, is just fantastic. 525. Sharon Biggs is a zoo employee who specializes in black-footed ferrets and who is dedicated to their reintroduction into the wild. Sharon and a team of others monitors the ferrets very closely to ensure their good health and survival. Because some of the ferrets raised here, usually mother and her kits like these, are headed for the great outdoors. Probably the ultimate goal of, of all of the facilities that do captive breeding is to work ourselves out of a job, to require no more captive breeding, to not have to hold any in captivity, and for the wild populations to be self-sustaining. We're a bit of ways away from that, but I think that's where everybody's moving. The Arizona Game and Fish Department is working with the Phoenix Zoo, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Arizona State Land Department, and the Navajo and Wallapai Indian nations in their effort to bring back black-footed ferrets. The Game and Fish Department selected Arizona's Aubrey Valley as premier habitat for the ferrets, so in 1996, the 12-step reintroduction process began. It includes choosing ferrets believed to be most capable of survival in the wild, getting public input, and evaluating the reintroduction site for a stable prey base. This is done by transecting, or counting active prairie dog burrows. Then, biologists, volunteers, and other specialists dedicated to the project head out into the cool evening air to do what is known as spotlighting, or looking for populations of black-footed ferrets within the reintroduction site. They look for their little green eyes, which shine in the night. A ferret is a predator um, on prairie dogs. There's a system of checks and balances out in the ecosystem, and a ferret is one of those checks to make sure that the prairie dogs don't get out of control. And they are also food for other, for other animals in the ecosystem, such as hawks and eagles and coyotes. 
So they're, uh, they're a link. Since the ferret's initial reintroduction into Aubrey Valley in 1996, Arizona has been a leader in testing innovative reintroduction techniques. I'm going to be free tonight. Arizona was the first to use these outdoor preconditioning pens to acclimate the ferrets to the wild before their release. Ferret specialists believe the pens have so greatly increased the animal's survival, so much so that other release sites throughout the country have adopted the practice. 2001 marked a huge success in the project when Arizona Game and Fish Department workers found their first set of wild born kits. Beautiful. Close. No reading. Check the, the pit tagger, the pit tag reader. We have, probably have a baby. He's a juvenile, he's wild born. <laughs> Good work, guys. It was incredible. I didn't expect it. It was just after I had started on the project. And it was the first time that we found wild born kits about five years after the project started. And it was amazing. We found these ferrets that nobody had ever seen before. We checked them for pit tags and they didn't have them. And then we checked their teeth and everything and found that they were young of the year, which implies that they were wild born. And it's a huge success for the project. It was a big step in the right direction for us. And for the ferrets themselves, more wild born kits were found in 2002, including second generation wild borns, and yet more the following year. Then in 2004, spotlighting revealed several more black footed ferrets doing the natural things the nocturnal black footed ferrets are supposed to do in the wild night. To work one on one with each one of them and see the different personalities that are coming out of what are basically clones since the uh, you know the initial breeding stock was so low it's just amazing to try to figure out how all of these amazing little creatures act so differently but they're so similar a total of mm -hmm. 205 black-footed ferrets have been released in Arizona the Arizona Game and Fish Department has adopted the practice of breeding the ferrets in the pens during the spring then releasing the females while they're pregnant. This allows the kits to be born in the wild and greatly increases their chance of survival. It's a technique known as spring release and is again a first within the National Ferret Recovery Program. So while we are diligently working to correct the mistakes of our ancestors, we're making up for lost time with the black-footed ferret. The Arizona Game and Fish Department is dedicated to conserving Arizona's wildlife, and we welcome the return of a native.